uniqueness of the coaxial rotor transmission in which all of the power is going to the lift of the aircraft gives this aircraft an, inc an incredible amount of lift capability. Um, it can't fly as fast, but it can pick up a lot. And, you know, if, if the aircraft was allowed to just evolve just a little bit more into, let's say, a 24-foot rotor with proper rotor spacing, I mean, the, the missionizations, and if anyone is curious, we brought a brochure so you can see what it did uh, just during the Vietnam period, because there's 20 different missions. Uh, this aircraft just wasn't a weapons drop. It had grenade launchers on there. It had a, a laser designator on there in which they would designate the target, and then they would have fighter bombers lock on and kill the target that was illuminated. Uh, they had long-range tanks on uh, the aircraft flying from the USS Mole in which the aircraft would go out and drop sonar buoys. And they were, having, they were having submarine detections 100 miles away from ship. And it was absolutely incredible what they were able to achieve in those days. And the aircraft was just being used as a telemetry uh, transmitter for for the Sona boys going back to the ship. I mean, you had all of that capability, uh, long-range capability, uh, just as a function of surveillance, but it can do so much more. We have one man at Nav Air who will say categorically that his life was saved by the QH-50 when it was flying, uh, when he was a uh, 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 Marine Special Operations Group. He'd gone into Vietnam uh, on, a, on a mission. He came out, and his boat was gone. And then he came out and he got on his radio and he and he didn't panic, but he started screaming for 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 the ship to you know to find it. And apparently they thought he was dead and that's why they left. That was the story back. But he was asking for some sort of assistance and he didn't get it. And so uh, a destroyer that was uh, uh, doing naval gunfire support, but also had the midget system, which was nothing more than a retractable lanyard that came down from the aircraft. Um, you could pick up someone with it, but it fouled on the aircraft. They flew the aircraft to him and it wouldn't come down. And so he gave the, it's not working, to the camera. And the next thing he saw is the aircraft was coming down on top of him. And he's like, oh my God, this aircraft is going to crash on me. You know, and, uh, and it didn't. They put the skids in the water. He climbed on one of the skids and they hauled him back to ship. And, 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 and he will not come forward because he is in service today. He will not, he, cannot come forward. But he picked up the phone and he called me and told me. So, and I, and, I, and I think he emailed me at one point, and I think I sent that to you. You know, so he's out there, but you know, we, we, we need people, especially in the D.C. area that are inside. We need to see the aircraft here, and we hope to get the story started again. That's all we want.